What's up guys, Sean here from Shooty School. Today we're checking out the Roland TD4. It's an older unit, it's over 10 years old. I've had it for 10 years, it's held up well. My primary purpose for it is to trigger drum software, but the stock sounds are acceptable and I bet you it goes for a reasonable price used for people who are just trying to get into V drumming. So whether you're here because you've, you're a veteran with it and you wanna learn all the nooks and crannies or if you're looking to learn it from top to bottom because you just picked one up, this is the video for you. So let's get jamming. Besides the power knob up here in the upper left, here's the volume knob. The volume knob will control your headphone volume and it will control the volume coming out of the unbalanced quarter jack cables coming out of the back in which I have plugged into a mixer, which you might plug into your um, audio interface for recording or you might plug it into some DI boxes for playing live. To the right of that, I have the drum kit selection buttons. There's 25 preset drum kits. And you simply can scroll through them to hear different kits. And so on. And I'll demo those at the end of the video. So I'm not wasting too much time up front. So if you hear from the sounds, you can go to the end of the video. Above the drum kit selection buttons is the tuning knob. Let me select tuning. If you want to tune a particular drum on your kit, what you do first is you strike that drum and as you can see it says snare in the top part of my display and now I can tune that drum if I hit tom 1 there's tom 1 and I simply rotate the value dial over here while I'm hitting that drum and I can tune it and as for the snare maybe you want to grab a quick piccolo sound you got one almost instantly right there. Now next to the tuning button is a muffling button. It works the same way. If you hit a drum, which is the snare, you can see I have snare highlighted up there. Now we can tune it with the volume, volume knob. Keep in mind, whether you're tuning or muffling, some instruments, kit pieces, will not tune or muffle. If I hit the symbol one over here, you can see these horizontal lines at the bottom of the screen. And as you can see, when I turn the dial, nothing happens. So if you see those lines, that means you cannot tune or muffle it. Moving along, let me deselect muffling. Let's get over to the other side of the hardware interface here. In the upper right is the metronome, super important. You just hit it and it will engage. When you hit the metronome, this uh, value knob will adjust the tempo. Below the metronome is a record button, a play, and a stop button. Now, if you hit the play button right now, you will hear a default performance from the TD4. But the record button, which is most important, um, you simply hit record. As you can see, the message says, once you hit any pad, the recording will start. It's in record standby mode right now. So let's record something. I'll hit stop and it will immediately play. You can engage the metronome and hit the record button and track to a metronome. And the metronome is still sounding while you play. So you can really critique your performances to a click. And a last note, if I hit play and hear my beat and then continue to hold play for two seconds, the recording will loop. So that's how you record, playback, and use the metronome. Now let's get into a bigger portion of the video right now, which is the coach mode. This is a good place to go to receive free training from your TD4. Coach mode has five different practices. Roland calls them practices, so I'm gonna call them practices. If you hit coach, we are now on practice number one, which is called warm-ups. Now, the warm-ups practice is actually three different exercises combined. What's cool about 
the coach is you're you're always graded on your performance it will give you feedback either after you're done playing or while you're playing so you understand if you're making progress or not i'm going to do practice number one which is warm-ups and if i hit the metronome button this is universal information i'm saying right now if i hit the metronome button the practice i have selected will start instantly and i will start playing it or if i go to the practice i want to adjust instead of hitting the metronome and starting right away i will hit the ok button instead on this screen i can hit the metronome and start or I can hit the menu button and adjust the parameters of the exercise. And I'm going to do that right now. The reason why I'm discussing this before and not after is because this first option is really important. As you can see on the left side of the screen, it says select and downwards. And here is my select up and down buttons right here. This means I can select downwards if I choose. Down, 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 up, 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 up. If I play the 10 minute version of the warm-up exercise, I'll play through three different exercises. But if I go down to five minutes, I will only play two of those exercises. Retain that information for a moment and it will make sense. I'm going to hop out of here by pressing menu. I'm going to go back to 10 minutes. Menu. I'm going to start warm-ups and I will talk about it while I play it. And uh, remember, once I start this exercise, I'm being graded on everything I do. This is called change up. This is one of three exercises. It's counting me into the exercise. So now the, the exercise has started. The exercise is three minutes long and we're playing at 100 BPMs. You can change the tempo at any time during the exercise. I should actually be playing right now because it's grading me on my performance, not even playing. playing this note right here. If you don't understand what this note is, what the duration of this note is, you should watch my introduction to um, rhythms and counting video because this is really important foundational information. The tighter you play, the better you will be graded. I'm going to catch up with you after this exercise. I don't want to make you hear me mess around for two more minutes, so I'll catch up with you in a minute. All right, now we're on auto up down. It's counting us in two measures up front before we start playing. And the point of auto, by the way, this is the second of the third exercise in warm ups. This is the measure we're on and the beat where that's going by. This exercise is three minutes long and there's the tempo. And the point of this exercise is that it's going to start us off at the default tempo that we chose that's already in the TD4 and it's going to gradually bring up the tempo to the highest tempo that the TD4 is capable of which is 260 so and right now we started at 100 it's at 130 something and now we're raising up to 260 so I should be just playing whatever I want but adjusting to the tempo switch <laughs> what I could do during this is hit the down button and if I hit the down button it will change my maximum tempo from 260 to whatever it is at now so I'm going to do that now let's say I don't want to go faster than this it's getting too hard. I can hit the down button. And as we can see, the max tempo is now capped off at 203. And now the tempo is getting slower. It's working its way back down to 100. If I want to undo that and I want to change this back to 260, you simply hit the up button. 
we're not going to hear a change right now because the tempo is still working its way back down to 100. But when it gets down to 100 and goes back up, it will then go up to 260. I have a minute left on this. I'll see you guys um, on the next part of this practice, the next exercise, three out of three. The next one's called time check. It's counting us in two measures. Bam, we should have started playing right there. This is the third exercise in the warm-ups practice. It's four minutes long. We're still playing at 100 BPMs, which we can change at any moment if we wanted. And the purpose of this is to play whatever you want. Play a beat, play a single drum, but there's gonna be a meter that measures your accuracy. If that meter falls on the left side where the S is, that means you're playing slow. That means you're playing behind the beat or you're dragging, which is good terminology for drummers to know. If, it's, if you're playing on the right side of the meter, you're playing fast or you're pushing. And of course, the goal is to bullseye it right in the middle. This is a long exercise, so I'll see you guys at the end of it. So now I've finished. It says coach mode warm ups has finished and my critique, my judgment has been quote unquote good. I don't think it will ever tell you you did bad. I think it says like try again or something like that. Let me hit OK and get this screen out of here. Now, remember, we're on warm-ups. If I select OK and hit Menu, I can adjust the parameter parameters of warm-ups. And let me go down. We already know about the duration. If I, if I do the five-minute duration, it'll be a shorter exercise, not only from a time standpoint, but it'll be less exercises, which is why 10 minutes is the default. So you get all three. But let me go down. You can switch warm-up grade to, to easy and it will be lo more lenient critiquing you. If I had it on easy, it probably would have said I did very good, for example. But in this case, I only did good. So this option means there was some eighth note triplets in there. And this option means if I change anything, I can add more subdivisions, shorter note durations to the additional to the exercise. It doesn't replace anything. It just adds more stuff to play. If I go down one more. This is the max tempo on that third exercise. We started at 100, we went up to 260. Well, we can tell it to go up to 240 instead, if we wanted. And down here is the overall tempo of all the practice exercises. And as you know, I set the tempo in the TD4 to 100. But if you ever see a tempo menu and it says tap in parentheses, that means you can tap on a drum and it will be like a tap tap tempo feature. For example, I was just tapping 47 BPMs and now 47 BPMs came out. I'm going to bring it back up to 100 with the with the dial up here. Um, it doesn't work as snappy or as fast as most tap tempos, but it does have the option. And as we can see, the selection arrow does not point downwards anymore, meaning there's no more options in this menu. If you hit down again, it'll just go back to the top of the menu. So anyway, that's practice one warm-ups that has the three exercises. That's what all those exercises are like to play, and that's how you adjust all the parameters. So I'm going to hit coach and get out of here and hit coach again to come back in. I'm going to go down to time check. We've actually already played time check. It was the last exercise of the first practice in warm-ups. But uh, let me just hop right into it. If we hit metronome, it'll start right away. Or if we hit OK and then hit menu, we can adjust its parameters. And the first parameter is how long you want to play for. It's set to 16 measures. It can go up to 32 and down to 4. So I'll put it on 16, which is I think is the default. And I'll select downwards. 
Um, I can ask it how I want to be graded. I want it to take it easy on me. I'm going to leave it on easy and then I can go down again and I can decide the tempo and I could tap out the tempo if I want. And that's all the parameters we can select. But we've already done this one. So I'm only going to play it for a second. So let me hit OK. And then let me hit the metronome button to start it. And as you can see, it's counting us in two measures up front. And it's the same thing. Down here, the percentage will tell you how good you're doing in real time. And you'll see text in the middle that says good if you're doing good while you're playing. And we finished the 16 measures, and even though I stopped playing for a little bit, my score is 74, and that's probably a result of me being on the easy critique. Let me get out of here. I'll hit coach. Let's go down to the third exercise, and this is tempo check. What's going to happen during tempo check is we're going to hear a metronome, and we're going to play what we want to it. You know, in these exercises, you can play a single drum, or you can play a beat. If you start doing some crazy fills, it's probably going to mess it all up. And not only that, if you play so ridiculously out of time, you're probably going to confuse the TD4. Tempo check will kick, up, kick it off with the metronome. You play with the metronome. And when you're really laying it down correctly over the metronome, the metronome will fade out in volume and go away. And you'll be playing, hopefully, in time without the metronome. The longer that the metronome is gone, the better you're doing. When you start falling off the metronome, the, vault, the metronome will fade back in. Let's look at the parameters. I could hit the metronome button and start this exercise immediately, but I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to hit the menu button. And we can tell it how it wants to critique, its, critique us. And I'm going to leave it on easy. It could be hard if we want. I'm going to go down and adjust the tempo. So that's it. There's really not many parameters. I'll hit menu, tempo check. I'm going to hit the metronome button. We're going to kick this off. I was falling off the metronome. Did you hear the metronome come back loud all of a sudden? It was reminding me where that downbeat was. Also, underneath the tempo, you can see a percentage number that tells you how good you're doing while you're playing. Also, these three circular items, I'm not sure what they represent, but the more of them you fill up, the better you're doing. Practice three and practice four, they don't end on their own. They end whenever you stop. So if you want to know how well you're doing, you watch the screen while you play and you look at the percentage and it will give, and if it says 100%, well, you're probably a robot. If it says 100% the whole time, you're really good. And, uh, and that's how you can track your progress on that. So let's move on to practice four, which is quiet count. And this is uh, a similar type of exercise as before, where the metronome leaves and comes back. But this one isn't interactive. This one's uh, premeditated. So knowing that, let me, instead of hitting the metronome, which will start the exercise right away, I'm going to hit OK and then hit the menu button. And it says, how many measures do you want to play before the metronome drops out. We'll leave that at four, the default. Then I'll go down one. How many measures do you want the metronome to drop out for? And I'll leave that as one measure. But what's cool is you can go to two, which, you, which will leave you hanging for a while. Or you can go scroll left, and it'll go random, which is uh, interesting and more challenging. I'm going to put it on one, the default, for demonstration purposes. And then I can select downwards again. And then there's our tempo which uh, we all know by now 100 is, com is comfortable for me. So I'll hit OK. And I'm going to start this exercise and show you what it's all about by hitting the metronome button. 
two, three, four, two, two. No metronome. As you can see, while I'm playing, it'll give a percentage and that'll tell you how well you're holding up. It also say ready, meaning the metronome's about to drop out. And then it'll say quiet when the metronome drops out. I got 91% of that last uh, revolution down. So anyway, this is another, I'm going to hit OK to stop. This is another one that doesn't end on its own. You just keep going and you watch the screen to know how you're playing. To the next practice, auto up and down. And you've already seen me do auto up and down on the practice number one, the warm ups. The third exercise was auto up and down to where the metronome will start playing at your selected tempo, which is 100 for me, and it will go up to the max tempo of the unit, which is 260 BPMs per minute. I'll hit OK and hit menu just to see if there's any options in there, but I think we all know what these options are. This option wasn't available on the warm ups exercise. We can tell it to um, accelerate or decrease the tempo faster or slower. Uh, medium, I bet, is the default since it's set there. And what do you want the maximum tempo to be? 260. And then there's our starting tempo, which is our default tempo that we're already at. And that's the coach on the Roland TD4. What else you can do with the TD4 is you can plug a playback device into it. I have my ancient big iPod right here. I have it plugged into uh, an unbalanced stereo 8th jack or an auxiliary cable, which is plugged into the si side of the TD4. And whatever you plug into and play through that input, um, you will hear back in your headphones and the outputs of the TD4. So if you don't have a mixer or a DAW or a, a big playback setup so you can jam to whatever you want, this is a fast way to be able to jam to external audio. You could plug your phone into this to plug your computer into this whatever you want and here's just an example uh, one thing to keep in mind is the TD4 will not mix the volume of your playback device into the TD4 you need to use the volume on your playback device to control the mix if that makes sense so I'm just gonna hit play on a little drum track I have here I'm going to turn it up a little. And that's how you jam along to an external audio source. All right, let's get into the fun stuff. Let's create our own custom kit and we'll start with individual drum kit pieces. I'm going to hit the menu button and the first selection is instrument. Let's hit OK. Here, you can hit any drum kit piece, which will make it editable, and you'll see which one you can edit in the upper part of the screen. Right now, Crash 1 is ready to be edited because it was the last thing to be hit. If I wanted to edit Tom 1, I just hit Tom 1. Now we see Tom 1 in the upper part of the display, and this is the wood 12-inch Tom. And you just simply um, change the value dial to select different instruments. That's really all that needs to be explained. You can customize your entire kit now just by striking a drum and turning the value knob. Now there are different zones on instruments. For example, my ride, this is a three zone ride, the edge, the bow, and the bell. And as you can see, it says ride in the upper right hand corner and it'll momentarily tell you what zone you're playing as you're hitting it. So if you watch where it says ride, I'll hit the edge. Boat. Bell. 
We're gonna unlock a feature in a minute or two, which will disable the link. Theoretically, you can assign a different instrument to every zone. So I could have um, a snare drum on the bell portion of my ride if I wanted. It's pretty amazing customization, especially if you have a, if you're only using the TD4, like I have now in this video, um, if you wanted a cymbal here, but a splash here, you could actually do that. And just to further present that there are different zones to the splash, even though it might sound similar, if you hit the edge and you hit the bow, it might sound similar, but you can hit it at a lower dynamic and you'll notice Hear those different tones? Those are different zones. They do make different noises. If you're coming down at them in full velocity, you might not recognize it. That's how you select an instrument. And now you can actually customize your entire kit to your preference and on top of you finding the snare sound you want, as we've discussed before, you can tune it and you can muffle it. So, Let's go down. The selection menu says I can do go down. Let's go down one. Here we have tuning, which you already know how to do because there's a actual uh, button on the interface and muffling, which you already know how to do because there's a muffling button on the interface. That's it for the instrument menu. So let's go back into the menu and see what's next. Instrument. Now we have the drum kit mixer. I have mixer selected. I'm going to hit OK. Now we have individual pad volumes. Now, if I want to hear my performance overall louder or quieter, I would adjust the master volume knob and I would turn the whole kit up at the same time. This is for individual pads. For example, you know what? I like my ride sitting lower in the mix. I want the ride to be lower compared to the rest of the drum. So you want to hit the drum, you want to manipulate before you make the adjustment. Ride's the last thing I hit, so it's up there in the right hand corner saying ride is what will be edited and the ride is at 83. And I'll just bring it down to somewhere in the 60s, maybe 50 to make it obvious. Bam! That's how you adjust individual drum volume and you can do it on every kit piece. In the previous step, you've now customized the sound of your kit. Now you can customize individual kit piece volume to your liking. Let's go down one more because the selection menu says we have more options. Let's go down. Now we have panning and the ride is the last thing I hit and the ride is panned to the right at three and I believe it goes to 10. So 10 means all the way in the right ear. So you could think about it like this. And remember, I'm drummer's perspective and your, and your audience perspective. So my right side is here, my left side is here, and vice versa for you. So anyway, 10R means all the way panned right. So if you had a traditional pan knob, it would be down here, pointing that way, you know? So I had it panned at three, which sounds reasonable. So, you know, that's up here somewhere, something like that. But here it is all the way in my right ear. And this video is in stereo, so if you're listening on your home computer and headphones, you'll hear what I'm talking about. If you're on a tablet or cell phone, you're not going to hear exactly what we're talking about. Hopefully you understand it, though. So anyway, I'm going to keep this on the right side, three. Usually the drum kit's slightly panned out due to its natural layout. My hi-hat's left four, that makes sense my rides right three and the toms sometimes pan around in the stereo spectrum left one that's barely any panning at all maybe i'll put this out left three right two right four i'll go right five that's panning we have more selections i'm going to select downwards now we have the overall kit volume. So now we can raise and lower the entire kit 
at the same time or drop it at the same time and there's a there's some gain staging here is a way to think way to think about it as in to raise the whole kit's volume up or down can easily happen right here with your your hardware volume knob so you can think about this as being a volume knob before this volume knob i can move down for another selection let's see what's there x stick which Maybe you could call it cross stick. Maybe you could call it side stick. Uh, the terminology in here is different than how I communicate. So if I confuse terms, forgive me. Either way, we're talking about what I'm doing with my left hand, which we'll, I'll try and call it X stick since that's what it's called here. It's when you have not a, not a drummer's rim shot. Here's a, here's a snare hit. Here's a, a rim shot hit, which you hear more of a metallic um, overtone and then there's like a let's just say a lower dynamic tone turn it on that's a different tone so here's a snare and then there's a threshold if you hit the rim hard you will get a rim shot and if you hit the rim light you will get an X stick I'll just generically demo it for you If you hit the snare hard enough, it won't be a side stick anymore. If you hit it this hard, it will then turn into a rim shot. You hear that switch? So this was off. Once you turn it to one, two, or three, you turn it on, and then one, two, or three is how loud you hear it. And I'm gonna keep it up to three because I want it to come through the mix. And I'm not a professional drummer with killer dynamics, especially for a technique I'm not used to playing. So I just want to hear it all the time. That's X stick and I'm gonna leave it on. And that's the last option in this menu. So there we go. We know how to customize our drum kit. We know how to mix the volume of our kit pieces, pan, our kit pieces, engage side stick. We understand now this, now three articulations from our snare. Let's hop out of the menu, I'll hit okay, and let's go down, what's the next selection? Next selection's ambience. Um, this is basically the only um, effects that the TD4 offers, and it's just different forms of reverb sounds, and reverbs can sound artificial, like a special effect or they can sound nat natural like the ambience of a room that you're in let's hit okay and then before we use the value knob to just to audition an ambience let's go down one more step and take note that if this is set to zero you won't hear anything so if i'm up here testing these out i won't hear any differences it'll all just sound like it's off See? But if we go down to the amount, it's called ambience depth. I'm just, look, it's an amount knob. Zero means no amount. One might be the default because that's where it was when I first got here. But let me just turn it up all the way so we can really hear what's going on. And then we can dial it back later. So now that I've turned the ambience depth, which is the amount up to the maximum, now I'll go and audition what these sound like. So here's no ambience. And then I'm just gonna go through them so you get an idea of the capability. I'm gonna leave it on studio. I think that's what I usually play on. I haven't played on this in years, so. So I'll go to studio and I'm gonna go down and bring this back to one. And that's it. You can choose the effect type and the amount, and that's it. So I'm gonna hit okay. We're back at the menu. Let's go down one more. Kit name, I'll hit okay. And here's how you put a custom name on your drum kit. The cursor is highlighted. And if we rotate the value wheel, we can choose what letter we want. And if you continue to, to scroll to the right, you will see it go from uppercase to lowercase. And if you keep scrolling, it'll go to numbers and symbols as well. So I'm just gonna name my kit real quick. 
Um, unfortunately, I don't know my alphabet. So I have an S for shooty, and then I want to go over one more space. So now the select up and down will actually move your cursor left and right. And since it's on a symbol, I could twist until I get the lower cases, or I can hit the coach knob and just, there's uppercase, there's lowercase, and here's numbers and symbols. So I want a W. And then the arrows go left and right, left and right. I'm not going to make you watch me try and edit this whole thing, but as a last note, if you hit the play button, it will put a space where the cursor is and shuffle all the characters after that cursor to the right, which is cool. And the delete button is the record button. So I can hit delete and go back. Maybe there's a maximum character of 10, or maybe I don't know how to do it. You can comment below and fill me in. Hit the menu button to get out of here. We are on the shooty, I wanted to say shooty kit, but we're on shooty kit. Since we activated the X stick, X stick now appears in the display. So you understand it's on all the time while you're playing. Menu, kit name. Now we're gonna go to kit copy. You have three options, copy, exchange, restore. No matter which one you pick, you'll have to specify a source, which is kit 1 through 25, and a destination, which is kit 1 through 25. Let's copy a kit. You don't hit OK, you hit Down, which is Next, if you want to copy. What kit do you want to copy? Source. First preset which is V-Compact. If I want to copy that one, I go down again. Where do you want to copy it to? I want to copy it to preset number five, which will overwrite preset number five heavy. Number five will not exist anymore. It's one way to do it. Let's back up. Exchange. Instead of taking a kit and overwriting it somewhere. Now we're just going to exchange two kits, slots with each other. For example, we're gonna change preset number one to five and number five to one, like this. We will not overwrite anything, we will just exchange. Let's go down. The source is one, yes. The destination is five, bam. Now instead of overwriting one with five, which was the previous option, now we will exchange them. I'm going to back out of here. Lastly, restore. I mean, this restore is in, you know, a kit copy area, but it doesn't mean that at all. Later, you'll discover that we can restore, like factory default, the individual kit presets all at the same time. This is the one place where you can do just one at a time. So, if I did a bunch of tweaking on kit number one, preset number one, and I didn't like that and wanted to start back from scratch, I would go to restore. What do I want to restore? Preset kit number one. And you can also say I want to restore preset number one, but I want to put it somewhere else. So I could restore kit number one and put it and overwrite kit five if I wanted. Or I could restore kit one and overwrite it over kit one. And I'll do that. I'll commit to it. So out of those last three steps, when you decide the source and the destination, just go down one more, hit OK. Bam. And we're done. Let's keep moving. Next setting is MIDI. Let's get into it. The MIDI menu is pretty important to me because I trigger external drum software like Easy Drummer 2 only as an example. So let's hop into the MIDI menu. I'll hit OK. And as we can see, I'll hit the snare head, snare right in the middle. And that is note number 38, which is also the second octave of D, a D2 note on your keyboard or whatever other external hardware or software you're using. 38 and D2 are the same thing. So if I hit this snare, I'm actually triggering the software in my, on my computer. Now, 
If I use the value knob and change this snare note, you'll notice that the TD4 sound that you're hearing will not change. As you can see. But let me switch you over to the audio of my drum software. If I change this note, the note that's transmitted out of the MIDI cable on the TD4 will send a different MIDI note to the software. This is how we can control external devices or software. So let's preview what Easy Drummer sounds like while I change the MIDI note. So you can see how easy it is to map is the correct term, map the MIDI note to what, you're, what you want to control. And that's all there is to it, to MIDI notes, but since I'm here with Easy Drummer 2 up, if you're ignorant to what so drum software is, here's an example of a pretty affordable software for the amount of features it offers. This is just the default kit with no tweaking when you open Easy Drummer. I'll give you one other example since we're here. You know, there's different drum kits, different expansion packs, different options and all of that. And, you know, this is why software is so awesome is not only can you make the module of your TD4, or whatever module you're using, control whatever you want in software. You know, you can instantly change t to different professional sounds. So that's how you choose your MIDI note, and that's an intro to drum software. Let me scroll down. MIDI channel. Now, it's kind of like a, an older, it's older knowledge or a traditional knowledge that drum MIDI transmits on channel 10. I, that's kind of phasing out. I would just leave this on 10 always. Unless you're trying to trigger something particular in your computer and it requires a different MIDI channel, here's where you select it. Let me go down. MIDI program change, I have it set to off, but if you change your drum kits, it will send information, 1 through 25, since the Roland has 25 presets, it will also send additional information alongside your MIDI notes of what drum kit you're using. And you can just set that on or off. But a last note about drum software, if you're interested in Easy Drummer, check out my channel Shooty School. I have anywhere from introduction videos to the most advanced Easy Drummer videos on the internet. So check out my channel, but let's move along. You hit okay. The next setting is metronome. Let's go into metronome, see how we can control it. Here's what your metronome is, is 100, which we can change with the dial. Tap is in parentheses, so we could tap a tempo here. Let's go down. Metronome beat means a time signature. Unfortunately, this won't do time signatures out of quarter notes. It won't do eighth note like seven, eight, for example. It won't do that. But this is four, four. That's five, four, six, four, seven, four, and so on and so forth. The rhythm is what well, we want to hear quarter notes from our metronome like that. We can have eighth notes. We can have triplets and so on and so forth. So the metronome could be a really good tool to practice with could be it is and there's the volume of the metronome again you don't want to drown out your metronome while playing so go ahead and play and keep turning up your metronome so you can hear it and not drown it out or vice versa you don't want to blast your head off either and here's the sound of the metronome and I'm just gonna hit stop because that sounds extremely annoying that's how you change the sound of the metronome so those are the metronome settings now we have pad settings. Let's hit OK. Now, pad type. So if you take, if you're putting your V kit together or you bought a new uh, pad, Tom, for example, you want to go to the setting and make sure the right setting matches the pad. This pad is a PD8. So I don't want to have PD85 set. Now keep in mind, if you bought a brand new modern pad and you're plugging it into a 10 year old drum module, you may not see the setting you're looking for in which you have to make some custom tweaking, which we'll get into in a moment. So if you're having any errors, go to pad settings and make sure the right pad is selected for the trigger you're hitting. Let's go down. Now let's go to pad sensitivity. This is a pretty important feature because every drummer plays differently with how light they hit and how hard they hit. 
if I'm hitting light like this and I can't hear a note, which I can, you might not be able to hear this note right now because my computer fan's on. But if I can't hear this note when I, when I hit this light, I might want to turn the sensitivity up. I'm going to try and keep hitting lightly and watch when I turn the sensitivity up. I've turned the sensit sensitivity up to 32 and it's registering that as a full hit. Here's vice versa. Sensitivity's on one. I can't actually hear anything right now. And even when I hit it as hard as I can, it's still not giving me a loud sound. So there's a difference between sensitivity. Eight is a good sweet spot for me. So when I play light, I can hear a light sound. And when I play as hard as I personally want to hit, I hear that loud dynamic snare. And if you look in this upper left where it says pad, one box right there means a low dynamic hit. And that last hollow box means you're producing the loud, loudest dynamic hit that the TD4 can produce. That sensitivity, there's no hard fast rules. You adjust that on how light and how hard you hit your V kit. Let's go down. Hi-hat pad sensitivity. Now, this isn't the pad over here to my left, the hi-hat. This is for the pedal on the floor where my left foot's going down. Now, if I push down hard, I will trigger a closed hi-hat. This value knob adjusts the volume of the strike of your foot. I'm going to max it out to plus five. Here, that got louder. I'm going to Decrease it as low as it can go to negative five. And here how quiet it is, right? Zero is a good spot for me. That also, that's also for the strike of when you hit the hi-hat pedal, but not keep it down. So you kind of like splash the hi-hat. That sound, it's a volume knob for that sound as well. X stick adjust. This, this should be at zero. I was adjusting it a moment ago to test it. Earlier in the tutorial, we turned on the X stick or the cross stick or the side stick, whatever you want to call it. And that's the sound of the X stick. Only playing the rim of the snare. Now, and if I hit the rim of the snare really hard, I trigger a rim shot. And there's a certain velocity level, depending on how hard I hit, is when that side stick switches. To a rim shot. This setting adjusts where that threshold is. So if I put it up to positive nine, I personally can't even get the rim shot to sound. Now if I put this at negative nine, which I actually like this ultra low setting because I don't hit a, a cross stick hard. See how easy it is for me to trigger my, um, my rim shot now? That's what this adjusts, the transition threshold between the X stick and the rim shot. And zero's the default. I like negative nine. Moving on. Pad settings, crash two usage. I have two TRS quarter jack cables plugged into my ride. My ride takes two separate cables instead of just one, which is what every other kit piece takes. The reason why this takes two separate cables is because all my other kit pieces have either one or two zones. My ride has three zones. That's why it needs two cables to transmit all that extra information. I could take out one of the two cables from my ride and actually have an extra crash. And if I did that, this is how I tell the TD4 I'm doing that. I would change crash two usage from ride bell to crash two. And now I could have a two zone ride, not three zone, and an extra crash. That's not my preference in this tutorial though. Pad settings advanced, I could hit, hit okay. We're gonna cover this and we're gonna look at the manual together because this video would easily be 20 minutes longer for me to try and create problems 
so I could fix them with these settings. So we'll just cover that in the manual. We're in the advanced pad settings. We're in the TD4 manual. And you'll probably find yourself here when you're using third party stuff. And the stock TD4 stuff probably doesn't need adjustments like this. The first setting is threshold. Threshold means the TD4 needs to hear uh, a certain level in order to be triggered. So you would adjust the threshold. There's kind of a graph over here that explains it. Here's some really generic examples, and definitely not limited to it. Maybe you're playing live, you're performing on top of a subwoofer on the stage, maybe your bass amps next to your kit, maybe your whole band's jumping up and down on the stage. If that stuff's triggering your drums, maybe uh, raising your threshold will help that not trigger, or maybe there's some flaws in your playing and you got some light hits coming through that you don't want to come through that you know you could adjust your threshold for that. Moving on, curve is a way to adjust how your dynamics versus volume are interpreted. And as you turn the value dial, you'll get these options here. And I'm going to use loud as an easy way to explain it, as in if you set it to loud one or loud two, no matter how quiet you play, because down here at the bottom is quiet, as you can see volume goes up and down, no matter how quiet you play, the volume will start way up here, right out of the gate. This is an easy way to get loud dynamics, no matter how you play. If you can kind of get a grasp of, of what this graft is like, volume, and then on the bottom going to the right, they call it striking force. This is velocity. You might be able to understand how these curves work. So that's curve. Scan time and re-trigger cancel. This is definitely for, or actually as it says right here, acoustic drum triggers. Now this is for using third party stuff that doesn't give out the same type of waves, uh, the same type of signal that the TD4 is used to interpreting. So here's where you would tweak acoustic drum triggers as a great example, because acoustic drums with triggers on them vibrate completely different and have a bunch of artifacts. So come here first, if you're having issues with your acoustic drum triggers or your third party stuff. Mass time, I, I've used mass time before when I switch kick drum triggers or if I'm sitting down behind someone else's kit and maybe the mesh pad on the kick trigger is too bouncy for me. So I'm always hitting the pad twice by accident just because it's dribbling like a basketball. That's a double trigger. This can happen on any drum. It's just bass drums. It's, it's popular to happen on bass drum. And so you want to adjust your mass time because as you can see in this diagram, um, mass time will tell the TD4 to stop listening for a certain amount of time after the hit, which will help it potentially miss that double trigger. Crosstalk is really important. X-talk. It's called, yeah, crosstalk right here. X-talk is really important because if you're really laying into just your snare drum, let's just say as hard as you can, that's actually going to vibrate the rest of your drum kit. So if you're laying into your snare drum, that might actually also unexpectedly trigger your first tom, you know, since the tom's usually close to the snare. So if you're laying into your snare drum, but you hear your tom triggering and that's unintended, you might want to adjust your cross talk. And down here, there's some settings I never used. They're for add-ons by Roland. They're not third-party stuff. They're Roland stuff. And as it says here, PD-125, 105, 85, PDX, A, PD-987 in the CY series, VH11, RT10S, and for the rim adjust setting, it's similar. When you're adding those pieces of hardware to your kit, you might have some velocity versus volume issues, which you might want to adjust the rim gain. And you might want to adjust the rim adjust because maybe you're laying into the center of your snare pad too hard and it's triggering your rim shot by accident. So you come in and you adjust that. Those are the advanced pad settings. Now let's see what's left on the menu options and this is the last thing we're going to cover so let's hit ok on options lcd contrast should be obvious five works for me if you have a unit that's aging or in rough condition a different setting might work for you lcd brightness depending on how much ambient light you have you might want to adjust this six or seven works for me Keypad sound. Oh, that's every time you hit a button, 
you hear the boop, 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 boop noises. Uh, I wish I adjusted this at the beginning of the tutorial. I want these to not sound anymore, so I'll turn this left all the way. But you could make that beeping louder if you wanted. Head rim leak. This is important. This is great. Let's do this real quick. Each pad may or may not have more than one zone. The ones that do have more than, than one zone, which would be the hi-hat, the cymbals, and the snare drum, and the ride for my kit, those ones have more than one zone. We can unlink those zones. You remember earlier when I was talking about how to get different sounds from your cymbals, you have the edge and you have the bow. Keep that in mind. I'm going to turn link off. Now let's get out of here. Let's go into the menu and let's go into instrument. And here on the edge, I have a medium 16 inch edge sound. And on the bow, it's also medium 16. So if I change that, both of those zones would change together if the linking was on. Now the linking is off. Now I have the crash one bow zone, which is right here, selected. I'm going to change that. I wanted to find a cowbell. Oh, there's a cowbell. Cool. Now I have a cowbell only on the bow. So check this out. So that's a, a poor man's way to get a two-zone symbol to do more than one thing, right? So if you're like me and you have a ride over here and you only have one symbol, but you want two symbols, you could select a different symbol for this sound and a different symbol for this sound if you wanted, which I used a cowbell instead as an example, because, hey, maybe you want a cowbell on your kit, right? It's always room for more cowbell. That's what unlinking those zones do. It's, it's really an awesome feature. And let me get back over to there. Head rim link. And I turn that off. And once I turn that off, I'm able to access individual zones. There's actually three right here. There's two right here. There's two here. Factory reset. Let's see if there's any, op there's no more options. This is the last option to cover. So you got to be careful here. Because if we commit to any of this, all your work has been lost. Let me make one note about the power button before I go. If you just kill the power, let's say I unplug the TD4 from the wall or from the power strip you got, your work will be lost that you made. In order to get the TD4 to save all the adjustments we've been making, like this cowbell, you have to manually power the unit down for it to save your work, so you know. And manually powering down the unit is you push, you don't tap the power button, you hold it down, and the unit will eventually cycle off after a couple seconds. That's how you save your work. All right, guys, let's talk about factory reset. It's actually a little bit tricky. Uh, the manual does not explain it perfectly. I had to do some trial and error. If you want to factory reset pads, that doesn't mean the sounds from the pads or anything like that. What that means is everything in the pad setting menu, including what's in the advanced menu. That's what it means when you select pads. It will reset everything in that menu. If you scroll down, well, you scroll down to commit. I'm not going to commit. If you use the value knob and go over to system, system will reset your pads like what I just explained, plus what's in the options menu. The options menu is right here. This stuff. Take note of this, though. When I tested out resetting system, which is pads plus options, it also reset my metronome. So I don't know what other trickery it's doing resetting. Those are the only things I know what I just explained. If you reset all kits, which is the next option, that will actually reset your the different sounds you found and, and assigned to your different instruments. And that will reset presets 1 through 25 so that will reset 25 drum kits in one bang and factory reset all means the td4 will power on as in if it was the first time you've ever used it
which is the true factory settings. Let me show you one last feature. So we can actually lock out other users from changing the settings on the TD4. So I'm going to power off the TD4. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the record button, the select down button, and then I'm going to hold the power button to power it on and watch the display for a lock symbol icon, which is right there. Now, if a user goes behind the kit and starts changing the settings, they can still change the settings, but when they power the unit off, it won't save any of their changes. And this is really valuable if you have some sort of community drum kit, like at a church or at a concert hall or at a practice space. So when people sit down and adjust the settings to their playing, when they power the unit off, it doesn't say saving anymore. It just says see you later, as in it's not gonna save anything. Now to disengage that, you hold the up button the record button and power on. And as you can see, there'll be no lock symbol, no lock symbol. And now, when we make a change and power the unit down, now it's going to save your work again. If you learned something about the TD4 today, please like and subscribe. I apologize if the video was a little jittery, but it was basically unscripted. So thanks for tuning in and rock on.